Oh, hiya, George. <laughs> hiya, George. See, this is why boat travel is always best. Hey, Clint. Hey, Wint. George, you remember my brother, Wint. Hey, George. Hiya. I was proceeding northward and encountered stationary vehicles. Thought I should investigate, hmm? Hmm. That's not right. Hmm. Thanks, Wint. <laughs> oh, did you do this? <laughs> but now, George, you're from the city. You must see traffic lights every day. Don't you know how they work? <laughs> George only paid attention to the lights that told him when to walk. <laughs> Those other lights were for drivers. And he didn't drive. Well, you're young and you are a monkey. But you should try to be more curious about important things. <laughs> well, it's simple. Green means the car should go. Yellow means slow down. Red means the cars have to stop. <laughs> Don't interfere with that light while it's performing its duty. Okay, George? <laughs> Uh, I don't even know why they put a traffic light out here in the middle of nowhere. Seems wrong. <laughs> the light was out. But that wasn't so bad. It wasn't even there yesterday. <laughs> Except that yesterday, Jumpy had his branch bridge to cross the road on. <laughs> then George thought of something he could do to help. Since George now understood how a traffic light worked, he was ready to be one. charge, that traffic light worked better than before. At least it was better for squirrels. George, you promised to let that light perform its duty. <laughs> what? Ah, oh, it's not performing its duty. I apologize, George, but get down. <laughs> hey, that's the squirrel I always witness proceeding across the road on those high branches. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, did they cut off his squirrel crossing for that light? <coughs> we don't even need this light. There's hardly any traffic. Yeah. Well, George, squirrel, chicken and chicks too. I am going to see that this situation is resolved. That's my job. <laughs> it turned out they'd put that light up on the wrong corner. It was meant to go up in the middle of town. Wint Quint and Clint Quint put up a temporary squirrel bridge until the tree branches could grow back. <laughs> and George decided to look at the traffic lights back in the city. Maybe some of them needed a monkey. George found a big flat rope. A rope this big must have something very important tied to the other end. Hey, 
Wendy. Look at what your mascot did. <laughs> I'll show you a trick. Push that button. <laughs> okay, everyone, time for practice. <laughs> practice? This was a chance for George to see all that equipment in action. So George helped test the airbag. He demonstrated what a good climber he was. He learned what a hike pole could do. And he showed them that he remembered how to reel in a hose. Oh, stop! Look! Maybe we're not ready for a mascot. Rescue request. A pigeon is stuck in a whale. Don't say it. Oh, I'm so glad you came quickly. Hello, George. Hello. What's the problem? Up there, the pigeon flies out, but then flies right back in. It's like he has no sense of direction. That sounded a lot like a pigeon that George knew. <laughs> and that sounded like a bad pigeon imitation Compass had heard before. That monkey has more friends than I do. He's free. He's going to fly right out the window. We've got to get up to him. But how? Our truck won't fit through the door and our ground ladder is too short. Rope and pulley. Ah, it's too far from the balcony. We can poke holes in the well till the pigeon drops out. Oh, our poor whale. was very happy to see a familiar whatever George was. Look, George is bringing him out. George knew Compass well enough by now, so he pointed the pigeon directly at the far wall. Compass understood and flew the best he could for the far wall. And of course, missed completely. We're ready for you. Guess it's time to take George home and find that dog's owner. I can tell you where Charky lives. George, I'm afraid you can't be our mascot. Because... For meritorious service performed in freeing a pigeon from inside a whale, I hereby name you unofficial rescue monkey of Squad 86. <laughs> rescue Squad 86 has a lot of great equipment. But sometimes the right tool for the job is a monkey. But those aren't monsters. You see? They're the same things in the dark as they are in the light. <laughs> Your imagination got the best of you, George. <laughs> but you know what? I have something to make you feel better. Your own personal nightlight. 
Now you'll never be afraid in the dark. Ooh. <laughs> All right, good night, George. <laughs> Bad news, George. The storm knocked the power out. Aww. Hey, don't worry. We won't be in the dark. I have got my trusty Spelunker Scout's flashlight. <laughs> wow, that's funny. I always keep it right here. Uh -oh. I know how to handle this old storm. It'll be fun, just like camping out. Right, George? <laughs> Camping out in the living room would have been fun. If George had been able to fall asleep. Well, still no electricity, George. Huh? Yeah, that last big storm knocked it out for four whole days. But don't worry, I know my flashlight is around here somewhere. George knew he had to get that flashlight back if he wanted to sleep tonight. But the thought of going back to that cave alone was too scary. <laughs> oh, you want those leftover walnuts? <laughs> well, help yourself. <laughs> George had led Jumpy to the cave. Now he had to get the squirrel to follow him inside. Huh? That was easier than he expected. was right. The only scary things in the dark were in George's imagination. I didn't frighten you, did I, George? <laughs> oh, couldn't make it home before the rain, so I came in here. Oh, and I found this. Want it? <laughs> <laughs> I've been exploring this cave since I was a boy. Come on, I'll show you around. That night, the power was restored. But George almost wished it was still out. And so, after a day of spooky shadows and strange shapes and sounds, George found that he never felt so at home as he did right then in the dark. Now as the bees get their nectar, their legs transfer a fine substance called pollen from one flower to the next. It helps more flowers to grow in the future. <laughs> Here at the hive, the nectar turns into the bees' food supply. Can you guess what it's called, George? Honey, George, the same honey you like on your bread. Ah. The bees make 
more than they can eat. That's where we get it. Here's another jar for you. Enjoy. <laughs> George was amazed something so tasty came from something he'd been afraid of. He wanted to say thanks. <laughs> uh, not too close, George. Bees will get angry if you disturb their height. <laughs> I'm staying to help with the hives, George. I'll be home soon. Maximum protection. Come on. <laughs> I jump on this plank to launch these mud balls. They knock the hive loose. It falls in the can. Then I take it to Mr. Rankin's. <laughs> yeah, it's not the proper way to remove a hive, but I need to act fast before bunnies get stung. George knew Bill's plan was going to make the bees mad. You know there's a proper way to remove a hive. Mm-hmm. Let's get those bunnies somewhere safe and call professional bee removers, huh? It's a hive, all right, but I can't help you. Why not? Too many branches in the way. You'll have to get a tree trimmer to cut them before I go up there. Sorry, I, I can't trim this tree. No way, no how. Why not? All those bees. A bee remover has to remove the hive before I go up there. I'll get rid of the bees after he cuts the branches. Oh, I'll cut the branches after she gets rid of the bees. George couldn't believe a monkey and his neighbors could be outwitted by a hive full of bees. Huh? <laughs> oh, that is a good bear imitation. Yeah, you know, I was telling George earlier that nobody's seen a bear around here for... Whoa! Is he gonna take the hive? What's he waiting for? The bees are protecting their home. <gasps> I suggest we wait in here until the bees disperse. Have anything to eat around here? <laughs> Animal control. I got a call about a bear in a yard up a tree. Help! Wow, look at that. Nobody's seen a bear around here in 40 years. Mm-hmm. All of us experts here on the hungry baby bear solved the whole problem. You were right about the bear all along, George. George hoped he would see the bear again someday. Maybe they could share another honey sandwich. You're looking good, George. Hey. Well, at least the right half of you is. <laughs> I guess someone's due for half a bath. I wish, but George won't take a bath anymore. I don't get it. Maybe George feels he's getting too old for a bath. 
Of course, that's it. My little monkey is growing up. <laughs> now I know exactly what to do. Come on, George, we're going in. Oh, thanks, Professor Wiseman. You're a genius. <laughs> well, yeah. I understand your problem with baths now, George. <laughs> and I agree, it's time for you to start taking showers. <laughs> Turn on the water, George, and see what happens. Oh. George. George. Okay. Won't take baths, won't take showers. I need to take a walk and not think about any problems for a while. But sometimes, not thinking about something is harder than you think. Bubbles. Maybe, somehow, Springy was nearby. <laughs> Hi, Betsy. Hi, Steve. Hello. Betsy made pretty good bubbles, but she was no plastic frog. Hey, George, we're washing dogs to make money. Want to help? <laughs> yeah, George, why don't you help? There's soap and water and bubbles and soap. <laughs> Great. George can help me make bubbles to attract dirty customers. George figured the triangle bubble maker was broken. But a square bubble would be just as good. <laughs> they fooled me the first time I tried them, too. It doesn't matter what shape bubble maker you use, they'll always turn out round. All this bubble making made George miss Springy even more. Sharky, you're more mud than dog. Hey, George, would you help me? Could you wash Sharky's ball? Don't be shy about getting some of that clean water on yourself. <laughs> of course. The park. The mud. Sharky. <laughs> oh, no, 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 you're getting dirtier. George, slow down. I... Okay, I'll meet you back home. Oh. Wow. You beat me home. Uh, why were we racing? George, you're taking a bath? Okay, then. Enjoy. I, um, wow. I wonder what that was all about. A bath just wouldn't be a bath without bubbles and sprungy. George thought he'd probably need better bait, too. Well, first he'd need bait. George had been eating a carrot when he saw the eel. Maybe eels like carrots, too. Or other favorite monkey foods. <sighs> Unless George could figure out what an eel ate, 
Bill was going to take it home for sure. If he moved fast, George could get that eel's picture. Place this hook. I'll be right back. You're not going to have time to beat me. Here was George's chance to get the eel first, so Bill couldn't take it home. The eel was out of reach, and George was out of breath. This looked bad. Soon, Bill would be back with his new hook. A hook was just what George needed. he could get the water to sit still. didn't want Bill to get the eel, but he didn't want the eel to remain trapped either. George, this is what happens when you don't use the proper fishing gear. Oh! Oh! It's just an old cage. <laughs> George, we have to help that eel get back to its home where it belongs. Mm? Well, that's why I wanted to catch it, to take it home to the ocean. Mm? <sighs> Being a city kid, you don't know this, but eels travel from fresh water to the ocean to spawn. Bon voyage, Mr. Eel! That's the proper way to say goodbye to someone headed out on the ocean. All the fishermen came back with tales that day. Mr. Quint's tale of how he freed a whale. And George's tale of how he and Bill freed that eel. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect pyramid. Looks like I do pretty good with no help at all. <laughs> Can you help me again? I want the largest package, but I don't want to mess up the display. <laughs> no, the package under that one. No, the package under that one. No, the package under that one. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Thanks so much. This is such a fun, unusual store. <laughs> George was thankful the grocery store didn't sell bricks. That lady looked like she needed monkey help. Oh, I guess my pyramid wasn't so perfect. What do you have there? It's the diagram for our new window display. It's going to have a tree, colorful balls, and other fun stuff. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Me too, but I can't set it up till my son gets back. I'd better put the diagram in a safe place. Oh, it was here a second ago. The grocer didn't have to wait for his son. George would set up that window display for him. First, he looked for a tree. He found one behind the boxes. <laughs> and colorful balls. And above the balls, he found some stringy fun stuff. That diagram couldn't just get up and walk away. <laughs> I love this store. I just had to come back and say, Merry Christmas. Huh? Hey, Merry Christmas! Huh? Why is everyone wishing me Merry Christmas all of a sudden? Your window! What a great idea! Hi, George, I... Whatever you're paying that monkey, he deserves double. I've never had such helpful service. Me neither. Have you been working here all day, helping customers? And this? <laughs> hey, Dad, this window display you came up with is pulling in customers. The store's crowded. It is. I guess this is our first annual Christmas in July sale, built by our employee of the month, George. <laughs> now can we get out of this window? It's July. I'm roasting. I know! The grocer told me all about your job. I am very <laughs> proud of you, George. <laughs> Keep up the good work and you'll be able to buy that oven yourself. <laughs> but I got you a little something to hold you over until you do. Maybe it came from something no one had ever seen. <laughs> Some undiscovered dinosaur. You're a scientist now, George. But how could a monkey figure out exactly what an undiscovered dinosaur looked like? Hi, George. Oh, I dropped some puzzle pieces. I can't finish the elephant without all the pieces.
The pieces George found didn't look like pieces of elephant. <laughs> you found them! <laughs> well, now you can't tell what you've got by looking at only one piece. You have to put them all together. See? <gasps> so to see what his discovery looked like, George had to find the rest of the bones. If he found one bone in the park, the rest must be close by. Sharky kept treating George's discovery like a toy, which may explain why you never see any dog scientists. <laughs> she didn't have it. Her paws were dirty. She buried it. <laughs> Another bone. This was George's very own dinosaur dig site. Ah. A dinosaur waiting for millions of years to be found. <laughs> but something wasn't right. The bones were all alike. Hey. Hey. Hi, George. What do you have there? <laughs> You found all these? <laughs> Here in the park? <laughs> Sharky, so this is where you've been hiding all your chew toys. <laughs> <laughs> Those are Sharky's missing bones, all right. <laughs> and we just bought her a brand new one, too. <laughs> So that's why Charky treated George's discovery like a toy. What a find! We've been looking for her missing toys all year long. Thanks for finding them, George. <laughs> oh, you made a helpful discovery, George. Who knows? Maybe someday you'll even dig up a dinosaur. We gotta go. Bye bye. See you, George. Have fun, George. Hey there. Huh? Have you been digging up my park? <laughs> then you've got a hole to fill in. <laughs> Discovering dinosaur bones was harder than it looked. But even if the bone George found wasn't a real dinosaur bone, it was pretty close. Wanna grow big and strong like me? <laughs> Great! I'll show you the proper workout, and you can be as big as me in five years. <laughs> George couldn't wait five years. Not today. <laughs> One, two, three, four.
four and a half. <laughs> George had grown half a licorice whip. Eating like a giraffe and exercising really helped. Maybe he could stretch himself the last half a licorice whip. That's it, honey. Go to sleep. Nothing makes you grow like a good sleep. And I want you to grow up to be big and healthy. All this growing made George tired. If sleep made you grow, he could do two things at once. <laughs> sleep made George grow a lot, at least in his dream. I'm sorry, you can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. You're too big. George didn't grow as big as he had in his dream, but he grew enough to be five licorice whips tall. <laughs> my hat! I lost my hat! Seeing Betsy lose her hat reminded the man with the yellow hat of that fateful day. That's it. I I'm not afraid of roller coasters. I'm afraid of losing my yellow hat. Your hat is safe, Betsy! <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> you grew already? <laughs> Any chance you've been nibbling on those licorice whips, George? <laughs> when you were first measured, the licorice whips were longer, so it took four of them to measure you. <laughs> but every time you took a bite, you made it smaller, so now it takes five to measure you. <laughs> so you didn't grow at all. Sorry. What's with all these sour faces? I don't like sour faces at me park, you know. Oh, hi there, Captain Zany. Uh, you see, this monkey's too short to ride the Turbo Python 3000. Too short? Bah! He's not too short. Monkeys don't grow very big. That's why we have the... You must be this tall if you're a monkey side. <sighs> You can ride, George, and I'm coming with you. But first, give me all your licorice. Hunley always led people through the lobby, so he used his skills to lead George around obstacles. There was more to monkey sitting George than guiding him around the furniture. Hunley cleaned up after him too, which had its rewards. <laughs> he also helped with those itches that George couldn't reach. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Every day, George's chair driving improved, and Hunley looked forward to coming over. Good morning to you too, Hunley. And then, something changed. <laughs> Remember, use the crutches, don't step on your cast, and be a good little monkey, uh, and dachshund. They taught George to use the crutches in the hospital. <laughs> but he needed practice. <laughs> Pretty soon, George was as good on crutches as he was on his own feet. And as soon as he got really good, Good news, Hunley. George is allowed to walk on his cast now. George showed Hunley how his leg was healing. But dachshunds don't read x-rays. Hunley didn't like to get too far from his lobby. But George wanted to go for a walk. He also wanted to go for a climb. But that wasn't allowed. Hunley was one serious monkey sitter. They went to the park every day. George drew some good pictures. And Hunley discovered he liked lying on grass and taking slow strolls with a monkey. See? The break's all healed. completely free again. <laughs> Back to normal, I see. Good as new. Thanks for all of your help, Hundley. <laughs> Guess you're back on lobby duty with me, boy. George wanted Hundley to come with him. But Hundley had a job to do. George brought his friends back so he and Hunley could be together. <laughs> George was back to normal, all right. George thought the country house was a great little place. But he wondered, what would it be like to have a great Big place. Like a country castle. George, look what I found. My old photo album. Oh, that boy? That's me. <gasps> Anyway, this got me thinking, I haven't been to the beach in a long time. You want to go? We can build sand castles. <laughs> well, I don't know if we could build a sand castle quite that nice, but that can't stop us from trying. <laughs> 
I'm George? I take it this means you'd like to go to the beach. <laughs> There, George worked on castle plans. He wanted it to be perfect. George, we're here. Ah, smell that salty air. George? <laughs> George hadn't planned on having so much room to build a castle. <laughs> With this kind of space, he could really think big. <laughs> George, wait up! Let me know when you find a good idea for a castle. He wouldn't build just any old ordinary little sand castle. George said he built his sand castle around here somewhere. <gasps> wow! Could this be George's sand castle? Hello? Anyone home? <laughs> George? It's me! <laughs> George, it's the greatest sand castle any monkey ever made ever anywhere! Now he knew exactly what his castle should look like and that he wanted it to be a surprise. Oh, you want to build a castle like that one? <laughs> oh, you want to build a castle here and me to build one down there? Then we surprise each other. That the idea? <laughs> okay, that sounds fun. <laughs> you need a pail and shovel if you're going to build a sand castle. <laughs> George thought he had to build the whole thing with his hands. This would be easier than he thought. <laughs> I can give you a few tips. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'll be behind the next dune so you can't see what I'm building. George's castle was going to be a big surprise. Very big. First, he marked exactly where the walls would go. Then, he decided where he'd put the door. You should always know your exits in case of fire. Now came the easy part. Building it. George never realized that Hunley spent so much of the day playing. This was fun. <laughs> Only his hands weren't used to being dog paws. George realized he needed a few small changes to be a good dog. Did you have a nice ride, Dante? I bet you did. <laughs> well, what is this? 
Well, Hunley, it looks like we have two lobby dogs today. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> <gasps> Say bye-bye, doggies. <laughs> but being Hunley wasn't all fun and games. <laughs> it helped to be long and low to do this job. Why, oh, thank you. Look, Dante, Hudley found your ball. Good dog. George wanted to be a good dog, too, just like his new hero, Hudley. Hold the elevator. <gasps> and here was his chance. <laughs> but picking up things with your mouth was harder than it looked. That's a baby, right? Hi, baby. <laughs> Thank you, um, that's a dog, right? Thanks, doggy. Hunley couldn't believe it. Everyone knew dogs were more dignified than that. <sighs> Being a dog was hard work. Just look what it did to Hunley. Delivery! Looks important! We'll get it upstairs right away. Come on, lobby dogs. Uh oh. Hey, looks like we're stuck. Oh. It's okay, Hundley. We can handle this. I'll sound the alarm. Uh-oh. Oh. There's only one way out. But we need somebody who can monkey up. Say. Huh? <laughs> You've been such a good dog, George. I almost forgot you were a monkey. <laughs> George had almost forgotten he was a monkey, too. <laughs> There were things monkeys could easily do that no one else could. <laughs> Hello? I I'd like to report a stuck elevator. Best of all, George didn't even have to think about how to be a monkey. <laughs> it just came naturally. A flashlight! Thanks, George! <laughs> And a bottle of water, and cushions, and a radio. And sometimes a monkey <laughs> was just the thing to be. Even Hunley thought George was pretty amazing. He might even make a good dog someday. But George didn't want to be a dog anymore. All he wanted was to take a bath, brush his teeth, and go to bed in his nice, clean room. <laughs> <laughs>